Our first guest on On The Rise this afternoon is the fantastically talented saxophone player, band leader, Dan Davis. His latest project, The Way Back Wins, is debuting on the chart this week in at number 13. And I'm so thrilled to have Dan on the line and chat with him today. Dan, how are you? I'm well, and how are you? You know what? I'm excellent. Thank you so much for being able to, to talk today. I'm really curious about your project, and I have so many questions. Um, first question is, what inspired you to put this band together? Okay, well, I've always enjoyed playing trad jazz. I started playing the odd gig at Fort Edmonton Park maybe 12 years ago or so. And, man, it was just so interesting and different from what I'd normally play, which was... Um, the intense modern jazz, fast tempos, intricate chord changes, odd meters, really cool stuff. They're very concerned about being cool. And I actually still love that music so much to my core. It's where my training is too. But there's something to be said about the simplicity of traditional jazz. And it's a party music, you know, and it's infectious and people love it. It gets some dancing and singing um, in a way that you actually can't dance to odd meter, really <laughs> intense jazz. The tempos are too fast or it's too confusing. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, you know, as I was listening to your album, um, you know, and checking out the personnel, you know, all those names of the folks in the band, it's like, oh, they're in the band? Oh, and they're in the band? So it's a, yeah. a pretty stacked band. <laughs> and I also yeah. really appreciate that you recognize and acknowledge the roots of jazz which is it's a dance music it's party mm. music and so you also feature a tap dancer in your project which i think is really cool how do audiences respond to seeing a dancer oh i mean audiences love barbara um that's really one of the things that jazz is tiny little bit weak on is the visual element most of the time, like our fingers are like sort of barely moving. Whereas if, you know, say with a guitar band, you can see every chord that that person is playing. You can actually watch them doing it. So absolutely, Barb gives a, a visual element to the band that we didn't have otherwise, or that we don't really have much of otherwise. In addition to that, she contributes to the music. She is a qualified musician with a degree in music in tap dance as her instrument so uh, she knows the arrangements yeah. inside and out and she comps just like any other jazz musician would if you listen to some sousaphone solos on there in particular you can hear barbara change her dance step based on what keith is playing it's no, she's just in the band it's um she's awesome i love that i'm really curious you know th so this is your first album as a band Mm -hmm. uh, or besides your your little uh, one that you recording that you did, why did you choose to do a live recording as opposed to a studio one? Okay, well, I I believe really strongly that jazz is a democratic music. It's an exciting music that's best heard live. My favorite recordings of jazz are live recordings that have the excitement and the energy from the audience and also some spontaneity from the band members. Um, and you can hear them actually in sort of a not necessarily organized way respond to each other live. And it's something that you, you might have to pick up on, on second and third listenings where it's like, oh, this is happening like right now. And so there's just an element of that that's really exciting for me. And also some of my favorite records have like significant mistakes and sometimes they have like the band members will swear they'll be like oh yeah they did not mean to do that so there's mm -hmm. there's something to be said about a high risk jazz recording where it's like this i mean it has the potential to be really cool and for sure it's happening right now and it's just that something to the live element that is really exciting for me um i want to play uh sorry about your luck and i'm wondering if you can tell our listeners a little bit about it I can sure it starts off with a tap dance and clarinet solo, sort of a duet. Our sousaphone and bass player Keith Rempel wrote this one. It's in a minor key. I mean, I'm not really sure what flavor of trad jazz this would be. There's perhaps an element of klezmer in it. I don't know um, what Keith was thinking exactly, but I do know that when he wrote this for the band, he sent it to me to to sort of chart and put into sheet music form for everybody else i wrote him back and was like yeah that's this looks really good oh bad, bad news i got covid today oh, no. i tested positive for covid and he was like oh well look 
this is this this is definitely the title of the tune then it's called sorry about your luck <laughs> like, oh, okay cool just sort of like reinforcing that that title is perfect for the situation that's amazing the universe provides that's so fantastic yeah, <laughs> All right, from the album, Live at Yardbird Suite, this is The Way Back Wends. Thank you so much, Dan Davis. It's a pleasure to chat with you. Here is Sorry About Your Luck. <laughs> 